No, oh, yeah. Oh, wait, there he is. There you are. Hold on. I'm in a, I'm in a hotel in St. Louis. Ah, okay. How's the tour going? Uh, everything's going great. We're, we've just been on the road now for about 10 days, roughly. Uh, and we got another 10 days to go before we head off to Europe. Oh, nice. But the, uh, hang on, I'll just let Dr. John Howarth know we're all good. No worries. Can you, okay? can you see me okay? I, don't, I can, mate. Kind of... you, oh, look, Dino, you look stunning as ever, mate. <laughs> now, last time I saw that handsome face, I was front row at Good Things for Soulfly. And, uh, yes. I think it was bleeding yes. from my head at some point. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, right as you guys started back to the primitive, I was like, yeah, we could, bam, someone clocks me in the head with like a beer. And, oh, uh, my God. And so I've got, like, beer and sunscreen going down in my eyes. I'm like, this is great. I can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we we had a good time over there last summer uh, when I was there with Soulfly. And I, I always love going to Australia. You know that. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's not surprising. We're awesome. Uh, <laughs> we, well, uh, obviously, you've got some battle scars, right? Oh, mate. Where, where, where would you? It's not a good gig unless you, uh, uh, yeah, unless you walk away with some scars. I've still got some under my arm from. Uh, there's an Australian death metal band called Psychroptic, and uh, I know Psychroptic. I, yeah, yeah, I was, um, I was crowd surfing at a gig of theirs in Tasmania, and I got dropped on a broken bottle and was so drunk, I didn't no- notice until the next morning. And I'm like, why are my bed sheets covered in blood? <laughs> oh, you didn't even know till the next day. Wow. Yeah. This was back when I was a drinker. Like, <laughs> yeah, the good thing it wasn't uh, wasn't too bad, you know what I mean? That's true. Night out. But yeah, but yeah we, we're over here on this U.S. tour right now. Uh, we're doing uh, half headlining dates with a band called Lions at the Gate. And then with the other half, we're doing with Lacuna Coil, supporting them. And everything's been everything's just really killer. A lot of people have been excited to see us. Um, I was really surprised on the excitement that a lot of people were, uh, you know, you know, getting into it and getting showing up to the shows and supporting the band, and it's great. Uh, Live Nation, which you might have heard of, it's a company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they're worldwide, of course. Uh, they've been giving us gas money and has haven't been taking any merch splits, and so it's real. And so thanks to them and Willie Nelson. And their organization called on the uh, bands on the or on the on the road again. So thanks to that organization, uh, they've been supporting the tour, which is good. Yeah, this is so. I wanted to ask you about that because so they so what are the specifics of it? So that they're giving you grants for for, for gas because obviously it's just ridiculously expensive at the moment. But they've now agreed to for no merch cuts because that was getting ridiculous. I remember bands like I think Eagle had to completely ki- like cancel a show, and I think it was Italy somewhere because they were going to be paying like almost forty percent merch cut. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, some of these merch cuts are insane. It's not just it's not just merch cuts. Even taxes. Uh, uh, what do they call it? VAT tax, I guess they call it, or even customs tax. Just to get him in certain countries, it's it's ridiculous, and uh, it's just the way it is nowadays. And you just gotta find ways around it. And what we do is we make in certain countries where there's problems like that, we just make the merch in that country. Like for instance, we're going to the UK, and then from the UK we're going into Europe, but we can't take the merch into Europe just because of all the customs tax. It's, it's not worth it. So we have to get all our merch made in the UK, and then different company makes our merch in Europe. And so that's just that's just how it is nowadays. And then you add on top of that all the merch splits, all the merch cuts that they get, and then all that stuff. And it just it just adds up to a lot. But this is that Live Nation is doing. I believe it's only a temporary for this year, but it's not it's not a full time thing. It's not all the time. But we're out here and we're able to, you know, take advantage of that, and we're just really happy that it really helps a lot. I wish it was all the time. Yeah. Does it really helped a lot, you know? 
Were match cuts ever a thing back in the, the early days of Fear Factory, or is that a recent phenomenon? Well, it's no, no, it's not recent. It's been going on for quite some time, uh, for many years. Uh, when we first started out, there was very minimal merch cuts and sometimes no, no merch cuts, you know, um, maybe 5%, you know what I mean? But ever, over the years, it's climbed up to 20 to 30%, which is a lot. Mm. Yeah. Mate, this is our first interview since you unveiled the new singer, which um, is not me, it turns out, sadly. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, how did you how did you first, first meet Milo? Um, I first met Milo basically. I just reached out to him uh, via email because uh, I saw a lot of his videos that he did. Um, before I was even looking for a singer, I saw that he was putting videos up on YouTube, and he was putting videos up on this uh, fan page called the Fear Factory New Breed, the New Breed of Fear Factory mm -hmm. fan page. So he's uh, been putting a lot of stuff up there. And I just noticed that over the years, hey, this guy's pretty good. So, you know, when it came to the announcement that our singer was leaving the band, I was like, well, I better start, you know, looking for guys. And so I put it out there and I've got a million, you know, I'm not, not a million, but I got a lot of people hitting me up about it. We got, you know, close to 300 videos of people um, wanting to try out. But for some reason, I always kept going back to this, this guy, this, this Milo character. And I was like, okay. And so I kept going back to him. I said, okay. Um, I actually reached out to him and I said, hey, I've been seeing your videos and I got this other band called Divine Heresy. Do you want to try out for that band? So I had him do a couple of songs and it sounded amazing. And then I said, oh, maybe I should, I should use them for Fear Factory. And so I decided to reach out to him again. I sent him some more Fear Factory songs and he nailed them. It was amazing. And so he was definitely in the top five. And then the top two, and then, and then he got the then he got the gig. I don't know what. Why do I all of a sudden want to hear Replica or Resurrection sung in Italian? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think Resurrection might work. I was honest. thinking that. I was like, I don't know about yeah. Replica, but from Resurrection, I think would work. Mm. Do you reckon he can pull it off in Italian? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I think you could. You might have to reword some things a little bit here and there, but I think it works. What are the what's the dynamic been like uh, compared to the last tour you did with Burton? Well, I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, that's a that, that's a loaded question, buddy. <laughs> um, <For me? laughs> it could be. Yeah. Um, I think you know, obviously, you know, uh, Burton. Uh, you could tell over the years that he was just, you know, kind of getting for, – for me, I could just tell that he was kind of like getting over it. And as a matter of fact, he kind of even said it a few times. Um, and you could feel it. And so, you know, obviously Milo really wants to be here. You know, he's a super huge fan. He enjoys singing. That's This is his craft. He grew up with it. His parents are musicians. His mom's a vocal teacher. You know, his dad's a – famous guitar player in, in, in Spain, I'm sorry, in Italy. And so it's in his blood. You know, he wants to do this. He's hungry. He's happy. He's he's not jaded by the music industry yet. <laughs> give it time. Um, yeah, give it time. Exactly. This is basically his third tour with us right now, and he's nailing it. So it's just sometimes – it's good to bring in that fresh energy. And I don't mean like just the new energy, but fresh meaning like he's younger. You know, he's 35 years old. He's got that. I remember when I was 35, I, I was jumping off the stage. I was going crazy. You know what I mean? And that's pretty much where he's at. You know what I mean? So it feels really good to have that fresh energy that he brings to the band. You know what I mean? And he really gets into it, loves the crowd. The crowd loves him. They love his accent <laughs> and it just seems to be working really well. And he's just, he is doing a great job. Uh, and if, if Burton ever saw it, there's no way that he would be able to deny that this guy is not doing a great job. Yeah. Feeling in his shoes. And uh, I'm honestly, man, I'm, I'm glad you're, 
you're surrounded by good vibes in that sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's not that it's not that I wasn't necessarily surrounded by good vibes with Bert. It's not that's that's not that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, you know, you could just tell that he wanted to do other things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and, obviously And Milo really wants to be here doing this. You know, this mm. is now the big news obviously is that you're coming to Australia with Machine Head. Yeah. Now uh those videos of you guys jamming together for Electric Happy Hour all of a sudden make a make a lot of sense. Um, yeah. A lot of people were a lot of people were commenting, Yeah, you guys need a tour together, you know, come here, come there, come to this country, come to that country, you know. So, you know, we knew that doing that was gonna spark a lot of people's interest and uh, uh you know, it's always good to jam with Rob and you know to me, you know, Rob fits in that category with Max Cavalera. These are legendary guys, they're legendary frontmen, and I just feel very lucky to be jamming with these kind of people, you know what I mean? And these these you know, very talented artists that you know know their craft and they know what they're doing. They they love it, they eat it, they breathe it, they live it. This is this is what they do, and it's really good to be in that category with them and in that room with them. Just to be you know, surrounded by that kind of talent. You know what I mean? Mm. So how long has this particular tour been in the works and who's opening for who? <laughs> uh, we're definitely supporting Machine Head for sure. Um, it's been in the works for a little while. Uh, you know, we've me and Rob had a few conversations about it and then um, it was basically just a phone call. I mean, Rob pretty much texted me and said, hey, what are you doing? I'm going to call you in a couple of minutes. And then he called me and then we just, we talked for about an hour or so. And we just, you know, we just, um, talked about, you know, an idea. And then it was like, yeah, let's do it. You know, it first started out with just the U.S. tour, just a U.S. tour first. And then he's like, well, you know what, let's, let's expand it to Australia. And we're like, I'm like, hell yeah, fuck yeah, let's do that. And I think both, band, both bands are legendary. Um, and it's a great package for Australia. Um, I've seen uh, a quote kicking around that you're going to be exploring um you were talking about exploring uh the concept of ai in uh in new material um <laughs> i have no idea I, I didn't read read beyond the quote because ha who does that anymore yeah um, <laughs> you, just, you just read the headlines basically. yeah of course and then just go into the comment section and argue yeah. that's what people do um what uh yeah, so I was wondering if you wanted to expand on that a bit. So what, what what kind of, A, how much writing have you been doing? And uh, Well, we've been doing a lot of, I've been doing a lot of music writing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me and me are just barely, or just not barely, but we've go, been going over concepts of what we're going to be singing about and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's exactly what I did with Burton. You know, we try to come up with an idea of what the record might be called, what what the storyline is going to be about, what the lyrics are going to be about. And I just gave a little bit of hint that, you know, that we're, I believe that, you know, obviously everybody knows what our, what Fear Factor is about, right? We've always talked about futuristic concepts, whether it's man versus machine or man and machine are getting along, or it's always a relationship between digital and analog or, and now, you know, we've always talked about AI, cloning technology, you know, certain certain things that are becoming obsolete because technology is taking over. And then we've also talked about where technology is here, like, you know, aut automatons, basically robots are here. They're among us. We're working together. You know, we've talked about the whole big uh, relationship between the two. And obviously right now the big thing is AI because AI is – becoming a really big issue obviously you know about the writer strike in california because these movie companies were basically just putting in say here take this movie and then take this movie and they feed it into ai and ai will write a whole concept for another movie mm. i mean so the writers are afraid they're, they're going to become out of a job that their job is going to become obsolete mm. which is exactly what we've been talking about in obsolete how you know, we were, we were talking about the, how, you know, 
digital streaming was going to take over and then, you know, CDs and vinyl and certain things like that were going to become obsolete, right? And they did for a while. But now, obviously, of course, the last few years, vinyl has been back and it's thriving really strong again. But um, we're definitely going to take the concepts even further and we're going to pretty much relate it to what it is today, you know, what how AI is taking over. Maybe it has an effect certain people, right? But it's definitely affect the entertainment industry big time. I feel like in the 90s, you know, Elon Musk sitting down listening to a manufacturer with a pen and paper going, it's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, I did, I did experiment with AI writing lyrics. I did take, you know, some lyrics from this record and some lyrics from this record. And I put it together and it basically just took different lines from each record. So it didn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't been able to affect it in that way. So I don't know. But I'm, I, we, I, we were just trying to see what would happen. And nothing that I liked, uh, nothing that nothing that it did, I liked. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be a whole fresh new idea and lyrics. Has, is there any apprehension on your part in creating music with like just basically you flying the the Fear Factory flag solo now? Because this will be the first time it's just been you. Uh, what do you mean? Like, in other words, just well, w without any of the, you know, without any of the core members, this will be your first, you know, um, uh, record without without so much as Burton or any of the other original guys. Is is that even factor into your thinking? No, because uh, you know, when it came to musically, it was pretty much the majority of it was my idea. Unless when I wasn't in the band, that's a different story. But when I was in the band. You know, the majority of the music was my ideas. Um, and then the concepts, me and Burton always discussed it. So nothing's really going to change in that way, you know. But we do need to have a little bit of change because if it's, you know, it's it's always going to be that we're, I'm kind of in that middle ground where it's like if it's too much old school, then people are going to say, oh, it's still the same. Then if it's too far different, oh, they went somewhere different. It's not the same anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, so I'm kind of stuck in that middle ground. Yeah, man. I, I am super keen to hear um, hear what you guys do. And, uh, yeah, this will be my first time actually seeing a, a you know, Purpose Hoop Fear Factory show. So I will be it's, very, it's very happy. It's not just Fear Factory. It's not just Fear Factory. It's going to be Fear Factory and fucking Machine Head, bro. Oh, true. Two fucking killer bands. <laughs> killer bands back to back. We're probably we're, we're probably going to come out swinging and just start with fucking demanufactured. Fuck it. Yeah, let's start do with it, man. Yeah. Get the crowd riled up and just bust into a bunch of classics. I like it, yeah. mate. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's always good to chat to you. And uh, yeah, man, you'll be seeing my big listen, smiling face in Brisbane. I can't wait to be out there. It's going to be a fucking amazing. You guys come, got to come to the fucking show. Get your tickets because you know that show is going to sell out, right? Yeah, you right. know the show is going to sell out. So get your tickets while you can. And, you know, we'll definitely be having meet and greets so you can come and meet Fear Factory and Machine Head, man. It's going to be great. Fuck yeah, man. All right, dude. Have a great day, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.